Everybody know what it is. It's your boy Laid Back with another reaction, another review, another episode. Hey, true crime. You up to bat. Bye. It's your boy Laid Back. Welcome back to my channel. Hey, two things we gotta do. You gotta hit that subscribe button. I'm drinking this water. You already know what it is, man. The kids to be free in 2023. The kids to be free in 2023. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the notification bell. Stay up to date with all the videos. But we got something different today. We got scary true crime TikTok compilations, man. I wanted to get into some different stuff. Y'all know how I do. I be all over the place. But we're going to go ahead and check this out. Fire Squad. What's popping? The girl you see in this video is named Deborah Gale Stone. Now, Deborah was born in California, June 18th, 1956. Growing up, Debbie was very friendly and she excelled academically and athletically. She received a lot of awards while she was attending Santa Ana High School. When she graduated, she knew she was gonna need money to help her out with her college tuition. So she applied for a summer job and landed a job at Disneyland. She was also very excited because around that time, it was the coolest job in the world. Okay. This was also around the time where the attraction America Sings was opened in 1974. This was a show that sang about America's history. This attraction had a rotating theater with six stages around it that would rotate every four minutes. They also okay. had singing animatronics in each of the six stages. It was the 28th of June, 1974 when- This dude got his facts down pat. Man. Debbie had just started her afternoon shift. Her job was to greet people when they entered the theater and she was also supposed to wish them well when the show was over. The show okay. was going on when it was around 10.30 p.m. that the audience and the staff heard a horrifying scream coming from the stages. When staff went to check out what the scream was, they found Debbie's body crushed to death by the two walls that were rotating. Now, Whoa. it was uncertain what actually happened, but theories have circulated around saying that she probably tripped and fell back or Damn. she was trying to hop from stage to stage. The only thing that was certain is that Debbie suffered a painful yet quick death. Following the incident, Jeez. the ride shut down for two days until eventually shutting down for good in 1988. Debbie's parents sued Disney and they eventually got into a small settlement. Debbie's parents also state that Disney was very nice with them and apart from the settlement and the suing, Disney's staff attended Debbie's funeral. She was finally wow. laid to rest and the Stone family received letters from everywhere showing the impact that Debbie had on people. What? The winner of season 20 of The Worst Cooks in America murdered her three-year-old foster child. On January 14th, 2021, Ariel Robinson, who was a former winner of The Worst Cooks in America, beat her three-year-old foster child to death because she didn't eat her pancakes fast enough. What? According to Ariel's husband, Jerry, he said on the morning of this day, he was in the yard and he heard Ariel spanking Victoria. And if that was the case, couldn't he have intervened and stopped it? When he came inside, he said that he tried to revive Victoria by Jeez. giving her Tylenol and a bath in Epsom salt, but at that point, she was already in cardiac arrest and she died at the hospital. Ariel and Jerry had two children of their own and they adopted Victoria and her two other biological brothers. Ariel originally stated that Victoria's older brother had anger issues and he was the one who beat her and then she changed her wow. story during the trial and said that it was actually her husband Jerry. Damn. Victoria's biological family pointed out that Ariel- Dang, she straight said one- She said her brother did it, then she said her- Whoa, she wild been Jerry. Victoria's biological family pointed out that Ariel's Instagram photos indicated signs of abuse towards Damn. Victoria. Ariel was sentenced to life in prison and Jerry pled guilty to aiding and abetting homicide by child abuse and faces 10 to 20 years in prison. Jeez. This is pure evil. A young mother has been arrested after brutally killing her only child. A week after she returned from her boyfriend's house, the father of the child, and that is not even the weirdest part of this story because after she murdered her own child, she went on to eat the liver of the child. And the overall worst part of this story is that she did all this with her neighbors watching and filming from the window. Now, what? this happened on the 23rd of April in Kenya and according to the story, 24-year-old Olivia Nasserian had just returned from her boyfriend's place at a different county what? and she had been there with him for nearly 8 months. Now, her and her boyfriend had a 2-year-old daughter named Glory, who unfortunately is the victim here. But what is not clear is her relationship with the girl's father, who is also her boyfriend. 
However, according to Olivia's auntie, after Olivia had stayed with the boyfriend for 8 months, she returned a different person because there was something off about her. On mm. Sunday the 23rd of April 2023 was the day everything changed. 14 year old girl would be found unalived along with her dad. This is true crime to pass the time part 19 the case of Ava Wood. Ava Wood was a ninth grader from New York and she was described as being very involved and very good at track and soccer. At around 8.30 on Friday, January 20th, Ava's mom would call the police after Ava didn't show up for school. Ava's mom and dad Christopher were still married but living separate lives. Ava's okay. mom even went to Christopher's house in Baldwinsville but nobody answered even though there were cars in the driveway. It wouldn't take long for police to soon show up and inside of separate bedrooms they found the body of Ava and Christopher. They had both been shot and it would be discovered that Christopher's wound was self-inflicted. On Thursday night, Christopher had told Ava's mom, this is how it ends for us. Christopher had been involved in two previous incidents of domestic violence. Ava's mom tried filing for harassment, but they didn't arrest Christopher because, quote, no red flags of violence. Just one thing. Whoa, that be the bullshit right there. When people try to go out there and reach out and be like, hey, man, we need help. And they like, nah, we don't see nothing. Or, I mean, that's just the craziest shit. This story makes me sick to my what? stomach. This is 14-year-old Scotty Morris out of Eaton, Indiana. On the night of March 16th, Scotty got into an argument with his parents after they forced him to put on this embarrassing t-shirt, mm -hmm. and he ended up leaving the house and running away. He left the house wearing only this t-shirt, some shorts, and tennis shoes. And so a lot of people are very worried that he is being exposed to these freezing temperatures. Damn. They have not been able to find a trace of him in six days. Six days. Naturally, Scotty's parents have been under fire because of this bizarre, humiliating form of punishment. And you just see the pain in his eyes. It makes you wonder what's really going on in that house, why mm. they would take a picture of him in this. Like they were going to use it later as ammunition. I don't know. I don't get it. I think it's horrible. But Jeez. here's what Felicia had to say to her son. This is Felicia Morris. Uh, she is Scotty Morris's mother. We've been working with Felicia uh, for the last three days. Shit. She's uh, been very cooperative with this our investigation. Uh, we had decided that, that uh, she wanted to talk to Scotty personally. Uh, so that's why we're here. Do I hold on? No, you're okay. Go ahead. Scott, I love you. And I want you to come home. And I know that you're mad and, and confused. And I'm afraid that you're scared of all of this. Everyone is out looking for you. And we're not trying to scare you. You're not in trouble. Okay? Um, if you're in the house and they come to you and you don't want to go out because it's the cops, reach out. Me and dad will come get you, okay? I love you and I just want you to come mm. home. I need to know that you're safe. This is crazy. Please just call 911. Tell anyone. Just, I need you home. I just need you home, okay? And I love you so much, okay? <laughs> My name is Jamie Osuna. I joined a gang and started using meth at 15. Later I killed Evit Pena. I stabbed her in the back with multiple instruments without even blinking an eye. I publicly mocked Evert's family before the judges and the reporters. I loved torturing others and I told them I would kill again, even in prison. What? So I was transferred to Corcoran State Prison where I met my cellmate Luis Romero. I used a razor blade to cut Luis's eyes and chop off his fingers. Whoa. I removed his ribs and sliced his lung. What? After disfiguring and dissecting him, I cut off his head and sliced both sides of his face to create what looked like a wide smile. Then I made a necklace out of his body parts. It was quite fashionable if I do say so myself. I am serving life in prison without the possibility of parole. Who will be my next victim? Hell nah.
This movie was so traumatizing to watch, but what's even more disturbing was that it was actually based on a true story and that a father would actually do this to his own daughter. The movie's called Girl in the Basement and it's about a girl named Sarah who's waiting for her 18th birthday so she can finally move out from the control of her father's home. But one day he tricks her into the basement and locks her up for more than 20 years where he tortures her. And the movie is actually based on the case of Elizabeth Fritzel. On August 28, 1984, Joseph Fritzel tricked his daughter into putting up a door in his basement, but upon putting up the door, he put a cloth covered an ether into her face where she fell unconscious. Joseph began essaying Elizabeth when she was just 11 years old and unfortunately that continued during her 24 years. Bro, what the hell is this shit? In the basement. Where she gave birth to seven children, one of which was a twin that had passed away right after birth. Joseph had actually convinced his wife and the Austrian authorities that she had left to be in a cult because she had a history of running away. But three of her children were actually raised upstairs by her parents because she was supposedly dumped them upstairs because she couldn't take care of them because of the cult. But her and her other three children lived in a basement where it was constantly damp because of leakage and sewage overflow. But the only reason they were able to escape was because her daughter fell gravely ill and she managed to convince Joseph to take her to the hospital where everything was found out. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of Tristan Bailey? Tristan was just 13 years old and she was going to Patriot Oaks Academy in St. John's, Florida. She was in seventh grade, she was a cheerleader, and she was really, really passionate about it. She had plans to be a cheerleader through high school and even go into college doing it. She was described as fiery. If she had a goal, she would get it done no matter what was standing in her way. She was also kind and loving and loved her friends and her teammates and her family very, very much. On May 9th of 2021, Tristan's parents woke up. It was Mother's Day Sunday and everything seemed fine. They started making breakfast and just were going about their day. Around 10 a.m., Tristan's mother, Stacy, decided to go wake her up. But when she got to her room, Tristan wasn't there. Tristan's family searched the house and realized she wasn't in the house at all. That's when they called police and reported Tristan missing. The area that they lived in was a very tight-knit community. Everyone knew everyone, and it was just a small town feel. Okay. So it didn't take long for the community to come together and start looking for Tristan. Flyers were put up. There was uh, search parties put together. Everyone was looking for Tristan. Okay. It didn't take long for community members to start going through security footage, trying to catch a glimpse of Tristan at all. That is when they found this security footage and it shows Tristan walking through the parking lot of the amenity center in their little town. Tristan was walking alongside Aiden Fucci. Aiden was 14 years old and he lived in the same town that Tristan did. Okay. Investigators began talking to Aiden after they saw the security footage and Aiden said that he and Tristan had gone on a walk around one in the morning. The security footage so showed okay. Aiden and Tristan walking into a wooded area, but Aiden said that he had left Tristan alive and well. Investigators asked Aiden if he would take them on the route that he and Tristan had taken that night. While in the back of the cop car, Aiden seemed to be in a good mood. He was just fine. In fact, he was taking selfies and on Snapchat and sending them to his friends. But then, like a flip of the switch, Aiden's attitude changed completely. He started crying and saying he was going to go to jail for this mm. and punching the back of the seat. It was just a completely Damn. different attitude that he had had when he first got in the back of the police car. Damn. Aiden's peers were all questioned, and all of them had some really weird things to say about Aiden. People said that he liked to carry knives around and that he also was just kind of distant and strange. He had told a female cousin of his that he was going to go to jail one day, and he also told his friends that he was planning to murder somebody. What? He didn't have anyone specific in mind, but in the next 30 days, he said that he would murder someone. Part two is up. Hell no. All right, that was scary true crime TikTok compilation, bro. What? That stuff is very disturbing. All of them stories is nuts. Some of them way more extreme than others. The dude that went to prison and killed his cell dude and self-love and positivity. Till next time, Fire Squad, I got you and you know it. Hey.